What's up everybody? We are going to do some pen turning today. I'm so excited to turn uh, one of these shamrock blanks that we made on the, the live stream last Wednesday. So uh, I'm going to get some shots in quick, but first I just want to do a sound check, make sure that the sound is coming in loud and clear. It looks like everything's good, but I wasn't really, last week we had an issue. So I just want to make sure that everything's good before I keep going. Um, but anyway, I hope everybody's doing good today. Hope you're having a good weekend. Looks like Mark's busy. Uh, I've never made one of those hybrid, uh, or not hybrid, but one of those toothpick box needle cases. Is that a kit? Um, I think it's a kit, but yeah, I haven't done one of those. I'll have to look into that sometime and make one. Pretty cool. Sounds like a really cool blank too. Hybrid with uh, dye stabilized with my wine country mica powder and dyed resin. That's gonna be pretty sweet. Be cool. All right, so uh, let's, uh, while we're waiting on this uh, mic check here, we'll switch to this view. So here's what we got going. Um, we got what I decided. So on Wednesday's stream, I was like, oh, we'll just pick, I'll let you guys pick which blank to, to turn. But the problem is you got to get it prepped and glue the tubes in. And I didn't want to cut all of these up um, because I wanted to get these guys to, to you, to, to other people. So what I've decided is I'm going to take these two. They're going to go in the mystery boxes. Um, that I got two people doing mystery boxes right now. They're doing testing. We and I know this has been a lot. I've been talking about this mystery box thing forever, but um, we're going to do one more month, basically one more payment, just to make sure everything still is going well with that. So far, it's been smooth. Um, so I'm going to set these guys aside. Those are going in mystery boxes, and I didn't want to cut all the blanks up and force people to use, you know, a certain pen kit, basically. And then this one is going to be a giveaway. So. And I forgot to do, to set everything up on that. That's one thing I forgot. So I might have to kind of fumble around and try and get that thing going, but I wanted to give this one away. Um, so again, I didn't want to have be have the person be, you know, forced into turning a certain pen. Uh, let's see here. Oh, just a small box, cool. Uh, so is, uh, so let me know guys, is the mic, microphone, you know, the sound levels, is everything good? You can hear me, is it clear? All that stuff uh, but anyway so I decided the, the only reason I picked this one is because this was kind of a you know we're doing this around st. Patrick's Day so I went with the kind of traditional kind of colors type thing um, so we'll see how these guys turn I'm really excited about these I've turned some in the past um, that I've made on the the filament style printers and I used to use ABS plastic um, there's also there's a ton of different ones that you can use with the filaments i was never super thrilled with any of those for the turning aspect of it um, so far the resin 3d printing stuff that i've done has been awesome but when you start getting into larger chunks of the 3d printed stuff sometimes that can be more difficult or not as good However, so far, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I'm hoping that I don't, I'm not getting my hopes up here <laughs> and, and to be like defeatedly crushed. Uh, but I'm hoping that this is gonna turn and polish also quite well. So far, everything's turned really nicely. And you can really, I, I've, fi I've kind of found some resins that where I can't really barely, you know, like while you're turning, you can't tell the difference between the 3D printed material and the resin, like the, the, the alumilite. So I'm hoping everything goes good. Today we're gonna to be putting it together with this Monarch, uh, I think it's a Monarch Grande kit. And I've linked to this kit if you wanna check it out on Turner's Warehouse. Um, this one's kind of cool. They call this finish um, gun, what do they call it? Hold on a minute. I linked to the specific one that that is. Where did I put the baggie? Oh, it's right here, right in front of my face. They call it gun polish and antique brass. I thought that was a neat name. Um, so it's a little bit of a different kit. Got a little bit of gold in there and some, uh, some kind of chromey, brushed chrome. So that's what we got going on. Microphone sounds good. Ashley's here. What's up? Yeah, actually, I got to be honest. I got a lot of inspiration from Ashley. She sells 3D prints. She's got a ton of awesome ones. Uh, if you guys don't remember, I, she sent in the one with, with the bricks. And, uh, and I paired that with one of my dark side blanks, the dark side of the moon theme from uh, Pink Floyd. So she's got some really awesome stuff going on as well. She's got uh, honeycomb sheets. She's got, uh, like I said, the bricks. She's got dog bones and paw print type things, like lots of different themed prints, kind of like these uh, also. Easter eggs. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go find your Etsy, drop you a link. 
So if you guys are interested in looking at these types of things, these types of uh, castings, um, go and check it out. Let's see, I'm, I'm gonna put, go straight to the, or the pen blanks. I'm gonna go straight to the, the right thing. So here's a link, go check out Ashley's stuff. So that's chipped builds, by the way, who I am talking about, guys. Um, so anyway, James Garwood's here too. I haven't seen you for a while. Thanks for joining the fun today. All right, so we got we got microphone, we got pen blanks, we got everything ready. So I'm gonna switch to the double cam view. You had to crank your volume up again? Hmm. That shouldn't be. I'm wondering if you might have just had yours a little low. My mouse is not working. I'm super excited, guys. I got a new Mac. Well, it's actually not the Mac Mini. I went with a Mac Studio that I'm hoping will be a sweet. Um, streaming rig all right so on the cannon so we got this guy set up over here i know it's kind of blown out which is weird let me just turn this down a little bit more um so uh what i did is i'm we're going with sierra uh blanks and i i made two of them just in case we run into a problem uh you know on one for some reason i don't anticipate that necessarily but always good to have a backup in case something happens you know whatever i don't like it or, or something so i just made mine into two sierra style blanks one of the cool things you know so it, it was a longer blank let me go get one of the the full size guys here's a couple of thoughts that i had in my brain about these and, and give you some some reason why i did what i did with these so i at first i had a lot of shamrocks and they just weren't as cool looking i thought I think it'd be cool if you're going to do a two-piece pen to just have them kind of separated out, right? So you can make one full pen with two pieces out of this, or you can do what I did and make two single, you know, single blank pens. Or this is actually something that I thought would be pretty cool. You could, you know, cut it in half, use half the blank with this, and then go or something totally different, like maybe a label blank or uh, even a piece of wood or something like that. Um, you know, what, whatever you want for for kind of a two different type of deal so i know that's kind of you know obvious no-brainer stuff but that's what i had in mind when i designed these things oh i need to get my phone out Shoot. facet blank nice i don't even know what that one is i'll have to check that out cool christina's here how's it going a little earlier for you usually you're uh it's pretty late there over in sweden Okay, so let me get my phone out so I can see the chat. I got a nice new handy uh, little magnet deal so I can actually see what you guys are saying. That's fun. Channel. Channel. Go. Let me turn the sound down. Okay. Boom. Uh, um, mag safe. All right, so I think we are ready to go. Let's get some turning going on here. Can't wait to see how this goes. Hopefully it'll go as I hope. <clears throat> okay. Glasses. So I'm going to turn the, let me know if there's, so I've moved my mic position a little bit. Um, let me know if there's any, uh, if, if the noise from the dust collector is like way louder than normal. Hopefully you guys kind of know what it usually is. Basically, if it's totally drowning out my voice, I'm going to have to move my mic up a little bit to where I usually wear it. Turn that on. <clears throat> and I'm super excited. I've partnered up with a company that makes, uh, they make, let me, let me hold on a minute real quick. I'm not by the dust collector yet. Okay, open that up. Is the other one open? Okay, so that's about as low as it's gonna go noise wise. Uh, but I've, I've partnered up with a company that makes air filters for like workshops like this that I am super ex excited about. I've seen this thing and I actually reached out to them to partner up. It wasn't like they, it's not like, I don't know. It's not what I would consider like that kind of typical sponsorship thing where you're just like, give me money to do stuff. They're not paying me anything, but they are supplying a unit and uh, I'm gonna do a video for them. But I, I reached out to them because I really like this thing. So I'm hoping it's gonna do, uh, you know, work as I expect. And I will be sharing that actually pretty soon, I think. So um, we'll have total dust collection um, awesomeness going on. All right, so let's see here. 
Ah, Brown and Loban. Welcome. You make some really awesome lawns. Go check them out on Instagram. Search for Brown and Loban. I, I might be saying that wrong. I apologize. All right, so I got my lathe going 3,000. I think I'm going to wear my mask just in case. Face mask. I don't anticipate this thing blowing up or doing anything weird, but better safe than sorry. I need a new mask. Uh, I need a new front thing for my face mask. A shield plate because I can't see out of it. And the stupid thing is I have one. I just haven't <laughs> put it put it in there. Okay, uh, how's the? Yeah, the view's pretty good, I think. All right, so let's stop it and just see what we're what we're looking at here. Um, so again, let me know if the, the dust collector is like obnoxious. Um, I'd like to keep it on, so if it's not terrible and close enough for good government work. <laughs> uh, Loban. Loban? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> let's zoom you guys in. I'm terrible with names. Boom. So you can kind of get an idea of what's going on here, what's happening with this blank as we turn into it. Now you could cut off the edges. The the let me go get a, a regular. Well, yeah. So, oh, you know, you could cut this down and get rid of like the box that it, that it, you know we cast it in or whatever. But I mean, that's just extra cutting, and I don't know. I don't really think it's necessary. But you are going to make a little bit more waste. But so far, I mean, that's, I mean, there is, this is, this stuff sticks. This is excellent adhesion. And I will say, somebody asked me how the, the honeycomb that I'm making, how it compares to aluminum. And I, I got, at first I was like, oh, it's fine. You know, but I hadn't really tested it much. I got to be honest, it's a way better um, adhesion. So this stuff really adheres well with resins. I, so far, you know, everything that I've turned, I've been extremely happy with. Um, a lot of times plastics can be, I don't know, it's it's an okay bond, you know, like um, some of the other like filament style prints, that's why I stopped making them because I didn't, they just weren't amazing and too, enough people um, had blowouts and, you know, I, I think it, a little bit had to do with their skill level, a lot of it, because I never had one blow up, but, you know, I didn't really want to have to deal with that. And, and people get really mad when you're like, oh, you don't get a refund, sorry. <laughs> you gotta turn better. <laughs> so, let's see here. What's the filter company name? Oh, no, I'll, I'll drop the, the, the company name later. Um, I'm, I'm doing a, a video and all that kind of stuff. Um, I'd also like to get the machine and, and use it before I really kind of go into stuff. Because if there's like a major problem, I may, if it sucks, then I'm going to send it back or, you know, whatever. So it'll be coming soon though. I mean, within, you know, within the video should probably be up within like, I would say like maybe two to three weeks. I don't really need a whole lot of time to see if this thing works well or not. It's either gonna or not. And I'm pretty sure it's going to do exactly what I want. That's why I contacted them. So, um, but it's coming next week. So I'm going to start shooting the unboxing. Um, basically just to let you guys know basically what i'm what the plan is with this thing i'm going to step back from that dust fan so sorry there's nothing going on right now while i explain this but um what i'm going to do is a video that's kind of an unboxing and also explain why i took the steps to go out and and contact this company myself because i just contacted them out of the blue <laughs> honestly and i don't do this you guys know that i work with easywood tools alumalite and turner's warehouse that's pretty much it and i little bit of turn techs. Um, these are companies that I would buy their stuff regardless. I've been buying their stuff, you know, regardless, and I've had a relationship with them. That's typically how I do stuff with companies. Um, this was an out of the blue thing. The only other time that this happened was with Laguna. Um, I really liked their lathes. Again, it was kind of the same situation. 
And so far, the, the 2436, you know, Laguna lathe has been everything that I've, I expected out of it. So I'm hoping that the same thing happens with this, but um, I'm gonna do a video that kind of walks you through what, what problems this filter um, fixes. Because there's, I gotta be honest, there's four things that there, as far as I know, there's nothing else out there that works the same way. Um, so it'll kind of help out with a lot of things. I'm just excited about it. I, I really like this product and I'm glad that I can get this in there. The, the, I talked to the president of the company um, and I'm, I'm very, again, I had no, um, I didn't, I don't know anyone there. I just, I just emailed him out of the blue and I ended up talking with the president of the company. He's the one that responded to me. Um, and I'm very uh, impressed by the company so far. Um, and, and the president guy, so I'm excited about it. But I'm gonna wait to, like I said, you'll get all the info on that video. All right, so let's see where we're at here. Ah, it's looking good, we're almost through. Ah, look at that, oh man. Exactly what I was hoping. So far, oh, look at that, isn't that cool? And it's nice and smooth. Um, what I found, a lot of people sell um, things like this, uh, you know, 3D printed things that are made with um, PLA, and I gotta be honest, I really don't like that stuff. Um, it turns terrible, it's chippy. There are, now here's one thing, I've been out of the filament game. Um, I just quit doing it because it just wasn't worth it anymore to me. Um, so I don't know, there may be newer materials that are better, um, but the ones that I was using sucked. I, I didn't like turning them, they were blobby and chippy. This resin stuff is amazing. I really like it. I really can't even feel the difference turning. Um, you could actually feel when you got into the different material um, with the, the PLA and even with the, what I used mostly was um, ABS plastic and it was a little softer and nicer to turn, but it definitely didn't really stick. I mean, it's the same thing that Legos are made out of. So, you know, it didn't, it adhered fine, but it wasn't amazing, the bond between the Alumilite and you know, the, the ABS. PLA, I think, bonds pretty well, but it's just the, the material itself is not particularly awesome to machine. So I'm, so far I'm happy. This, this stuff is rocking. This stuff is doing good. I haven't been disappointed yet. And I've even refined it. I mean, the first ones that I, the first resins that I tried worked fine. They were a significant improvement, but there was a little bit of chippiness to them. And so I kind of kept going, um, trying different resins out. And at this point, I've, I've found some. And I, I'll share all this stuff. Um, I'm not done testing stuff yet, you know. So um, I will share what resin I found used, you know, to work really well with this um, and all that good stuff. And I'm even going to share what the ones that aren't, you know, the other ones, basically. I'll, I'll kind of go through what I've done in a video coming soon. It's just, there's just not enough time in the day for me. <laughs> you know, <laughs> get all these videos made and, you know, all that kind of stuff. Wow, that, the, the colors really turned out nice in this. I like that. You guys seeing everything? Yeah, you're okay. Pretty fat blank, so. Quite a bit of excess material.
All right, let's see where we're at here. I think we might be through on the bottom side too. So we got shamrocks on the top, shamrocks on the bottom. <laughs> oh, yes. I am, I'm definitely happy. Hold on real quick, I gotta kinda, I gotta make a little bit of an adjustment here with my tripod. Sorry about that. All right. Oh man. Boom. Boom. You know what would be kind of cool with this is you could actually do almost like a two color pour, like something on the bottom and something on like like two layers of color. And you'd have like two different, um, you know, uh, whatever, two different um, colors, you know, to match your stuff. Just a thought. Yeah, I hope this makes it a good looking pen. Let's see, so let me stop. I've been just kind of focusing on this blank. I get into my own little brain and while I'm doing this stuff, like these experiments, I'm like, oh, how's it gonna turn out? So I'm all focused on it. Let me, let me see what the chat's up to. Um, one other little thing that I wanna mention about the, the air filter thing, um, and it's not, again, I don't wanna sound like super promotional or anything like that. That's not the point. I'm just very excited. Um, but part of the reason for that is, you know, it's a twofold thing with dust collection in your shop. You know, you need to collect at the source with, you know, a collector, right? And so I've upgraded, I have a really awesome dust collection system now, but my filtration system for just the airborne particles that are not, you know, the, the, the stuff that the dust collector can't catch isn't amazing. I don't like the, the way my system works right now. It's not very awesome. And so that's why... Um, you know, you gotta, it's a two part thing. You gotta have filtration and collection in your shop to get the best, you know, to keep that dust down. Yeah, I tried PET a little bit. It's okay. Um, and I did it act before I quit. No, it was only a couple of years ago. So, I mean, all, most of the normal ones are out. What I was saying about, there's certain new materials out. There's some that are like blends of PLA and polycarbonate. I know I've seen just different things and there's like super tough PLA, which is like some other kind of a, I think they actually call it like an alloy, <laughs> which is kind of funny. It's not metal. Um, I'm gonna turn this off because I feel like I'm yelling and it's just loud. Um, but either way, I mean, it just, I, there, none of the materials turned amazing. Um, nothing like this. This, I cannot tell the difference between the alumilite and the, the 3D printed resin. Oh, tornadoes. Who's is it Kentucky? It sucks. <laughs> Man, tornado last night, Yak. Stay safe, buddy. All right, so let's see here. Okay, I just wanted to make sure I wasn't missing anything in the chat. Yeah, I, I, and I'm, I gotta be honest, I didn't, I wasn't like super, super in depth with the 3D printing with the filament and all that stuff. I did do a lot of testing and different stuff. I just, it, it really wasn't amazing. Now, here, here's the thing also that I wanna mention about my, the way that I view some of these things. I sell pen blanks, right? That's the thing. It's like a, the, probably the, the biggest source of my income is, is pen blanks. And the thing is, if I'm making things where 20% of people are having issues, it's just not worth it for me. Um, I don't want to have to deal with emails and people wanting free blanks because it, it you know, they didn't turn it, <laughs> you know, with care. And, and then having to email people back and say, look, you don't get a free pen blank because it blew up on you. Uh, things happen. Like it just, it puts you in a position. I'd rather make blanks that don't blow up kind of thing. And so... That's why when this stuff came out, um, I talked to a few people about it, uh, Chad Schimmel, and it seemed like it was superior. And so far, I would say it's co compared to my experience with filament printing, this stuff is way better. Now, it's a totally different deal, the printing as aspects of it. And I think for a lot of people, it may not be uh, worth doing. But if you're just making a pen blank here and there, and you know, you're not like selling blanks and you know making a lot of them and all that stuff then i think you know the the filament stuff there's a lot of good good filaments out there that'll work okay um, another problem that i had with pet is that they a lot of them are just transparent also um, so it just wasn't as 
useful to me. But I think that the, the regular filament printers are good for a lot of people. It's just if you gotta if you're trying to deal with a lot of quality control, you're either gonna have to deal with that with with customer support a lot, which I don't want to. I don't. I just don't really have time for that. Um, or you're gonna be sending people free things a lot if you want to keep your customers happy. Because no matter how many times you put it in the listing, people don't read the fact that, you know, they don't read all the terms and conditions. I mean, I even had videos on how to prepare it, how I do all the stuff and warnings and all that stuff and people still blew them up and then asked for a refund. And I just got tired of it. All right, so we're getting kind of the shape I want going a little bit, a little fat in the middle there. stop it and let's see where we're at now it's getting pretty close to the you know getting fairly close to that final final dimension I guess let's say or whatever size not a lot more is going to change it's just not a lot more material to take off give you guys a, a little update on what's happening here that thing is man this is great color choices too um, this gold and green uh, I think you could maybe go with like a darker green possibly for the for the resin the alumilite that might act because these were so light i could maybe even see like darker possibly but you know having having a little bit more contrast with these might be even better i don't know but i'm, I'm digging this so far and once we polish everything up this is all dull but it, so far i mean i'm 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 kind of blown away by this this looks great I love it when a plan comes together. All right, so let's see here. Mark's got a dumb question. Yeah, I know there are so many possibilities when you talk about these like additive manufacturing things. It's crazy. And then casting too. All right, so for the resin printing, uh, Mark's asking, do you need to do support material if you have overhangs? Yeah, um, it kind of gets into a little bit of in-depth stuff i when i got into it i actually thought and i don't know how this would have been physically possible but i actually thought that you could get away with just printing stuff in mid-air that's just not how it works though we wearable iron man suit from pla that's sweet that's awesome yeah no you can't i mean you could but you got to put a bunch of support in there and i am absolutely not willing to sit there and clip off and mess around with these things um you could you know other people could but i'm i'm definitely not doing that and then selling them um it's just too much work i'd rather the other thing is i kind of like that box idea you know um where i can sell this thing and you don't have to be like this you know resin caster you can just get some resin pour it in the little box you don't need molds you don't need anything you just need a little bit of resin and you can make a pen blank. So I love that idea. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm digging this resin printing stuff. It's a lot more messy. I mean, it's, I mean, compared to the filament style printing, there's a lot more involved. And I don't know that it's for everybody, but I, so far, it's hands down a better experience. For, you know, when you're machining it, um, for me. Ah, well, you're gonna. Oh yeah, the Gene's gonna get into resin 3D printing. That's sweet. 
I'll have a lot more videos coming up soon. It's just, like I said, time. I mean, I can only make so many every, every week kind of thing. All right, so we're caught up on the chat. So let's keep on going here. We're almost done. I'm gonna take my face mask off because I really don't think this thing's coming apart. I have not on any of these blanks that I've turned, and I've turned quite a few. Um, have I felt like it's gonna come apart on me at all? Um, I, like zero indication. I did have one blank, so let me stop real quick and I'll show you. There was a little bit of chippiness on a couple of them that I made. Let's see if I can find a good example. And there, you know, there are some settings and you have to look at curing times and all these, there's a few things going on here. Let's see if I can show you guys this. See how it's, oh, I'm a little bit close there. I gotta, oh, what did I just do? All right, so there's like chip, it's not a big deal and you could fill this stuff with CA glue, but even that I don't like, um, you know, just, and I turned it and kind of sanded this and there's just, it's, it's chippy is what's going on. And so again, I mean, you can kind of play around with some settings on, on resins, you know, sometimes the cure time and the exposure times, and there's, there's a bunch of different things kind of going on that you can maybe even adjust even with the same resin. Um, but there's also, I've also found resins that just work better kind of. I don't have to really worry about anything. And so uh, one of the new Patreon, I don't know if you guys know, I, I, I added some different Patreon levels. And one of the levels is um, for 3D prints, because um, I'm gonna be making more different designs going forward and I already have some. And so one of the Patreon levels, if you wanna support the show and um, get you know, get any prints that come uh, you know, go over that time that you're, you're a patron, um, you can sign up for that. But the other thing that I'm going to do is also, sh that's where I'm going to share all of my settings and stuff for different things. So it'll be kind of an exclusive deal for, for that. I don't think I'm going to be sharing, going into, you know, extreme detail about that stuff um, on the regular channel. So um, one little little bonus tip for, for people on Patreon, a little, little, or a little extra kind of uh, benefit, let's say. Okay, so let's get in here, start finishing this guy up. Oh man, I think we're there. Let's see, stop it and uh, let me just check my edges here. Got a little bit of a bump. It's down to the bushing, but there's kind of a bump right there. That one's bumpy too, so let's, <clears throat> let's get in here. All right, stop the lathe, see what we got here. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. Still got a little bit of a... Let's try and get this thing kind of... tapered a little bit better there. 
Okay, I think that's probably pretty good. Uh, the other thing about the these resin 3D prints, again, and this kind of goes with the machining and all that stuff, but they sand and polish better than a lot of them. Now, you are right, P PET polishes up pretty well. There are some that, you know, work okay. So I'm, I'm, when, I'm, when I mention this, I'm kind of thinking more in my mind. Most of what I used was ABS. And that stuff's okay, but it's not amazing to polish. Uh, and then PLA, it's okay. I didn't find it to be particularly fun to play with. So let's get you guys a, a kind of a close-up. This is it's the, like the final here, right here. That's what it's looking like. Man, I'm digging the gold. Shaky cam. Look at that. Wow. Nice and smooth. Woo -wee. She kind of a side angle view. Oh. Gotta have that, that Ferris Bueller's Day Off song. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, Lily, I always use negative rake at this point. Um, if you're turning resins, I, I mean, I highly recommend it. Uh, it just, I can literally turn one-handed, bump it into the resin, it's not gonna catch or do anything. And so while the re the standard cutters, I never really had a problem, especially with pens. Um, I, they, I never really got a bunch of chip out necessarily or anything, but they are more aggressive. And if you're not careful, or you kind of accidentally bump into it, it's going to chip. Uh, whereas these things, honestly, you can hollow with it one-handed and just sit there and bump it into the, <laughs> into the resin and it's not going to chip it out. The same way that you get, like, they're like kind of catches. Um, and it just kind of almost like shatters, you know. I don't know, if, if, for anybody that knows what I'm talking about, when you get like kind of one of the little catches with the, a standard cutter, carbide cutter on resin, it's, it's ugly. And so it's kind of the safety thing. I mean, you just get excellent results with them. So I always recommend that, especially if people are having difficulties, issues with whatever you're using, whether it be gouges or the standard cutters. The negative rate cutters on resin just, I mean, handle it. Yeah, I don't know anybody that's like, I love PLA, it turns great. <laughs> Just, I don't know, not, not awesome stuff. Okay, so let's see here, we're gonna do a little sanding. So this thing's pretty smooth. I think I'm gonna try and see if I can get away with starting at 400 grit today. Let me move, I'm going to move the camera just a little out of my way, so I don't, hold on a minute, sorry, I'm just trying to get the legs out of the way so I don't kick it while I'm sitting here working on the blank. I'm going to drop that speed down to about 500. And what I'm looking for, so I grabbed a, some 400, and if I have like significant tool marks, a bunch of ridges, and when I stop this, so I just go for just, just a little bit, and you'll see this is actually dead smooth. I, I did a good, the, the better you can do turning, you know, the smoother you can get it off the tool, the less sanding you have to do. And so had I, if there was a bunch of ridges in here, a bunch of tool marks, then um, you would have shiny spots. They're, they're basically low spots, and there's almost none. So I'm not gonna have to sand this very much at all. Yeah, so who picked the color on this? I can't remember now. Was it Mark? Who, who picked the green and or maybe Paul? I, I, man, I can't remember now. Who picked the green and, and gold on Wednesday's stream? It was brilliant. Brilliant color choice. So just kind of moderate pressure. You don't really want to do a lot of shaping with your sandpaper and again you know the better now i gotta be honest that was actually one of the best <laughs> i've ever done off the tool that was as smooth as i've ever gotten it so i, I usually have to do some sanding but um, you don't want to be doing a lot of sanding especially with like the higher grits if there's a bunch of ridges just drop down you know to 240 or 180 just so you can get all those out Just 
moderate pressure. You don't want to build up heat and you don't want to, um, you know, clog the paper up and all that kind of stuff. Just, you run the risk of problems if you try to over sand it. Let the sandpaper do its job. Sometimes if you have blowouts, so if the tool catches and you kind of get that where it's like, I, I can't even explain it. It's just, it's a horrible, the, the, the grab kind of the catch with, with a car, you know, a standard carbide cutter. That's one thing. If you're getting blowouts on the ends, a lot of times that might have to do more with the gluing of the tubes. Cause if, if the ends aren't, if the tube isn't glued down well, uh, what ends up happening is you get it really, really thin down at the ends and, and this thing can kind of warp under the, you know, speeds and pressures. Um, just, just any tool applying pressure, even on a negative rate cutter, applying a little bit of pressure on that thing, it can kind of bend and warp and then the, the tool edge can kind of grab that and it'll kind of warp it and then it just cracks it. And so you really want to make sure that you're, you're the glue job, let's say, is good so that, that the plastic can't move, it's locked in place. Um, I'm not saying that's every single issue, but I think that's a big one um, from kind of what I've, from my experience. All right, so I've just wiped that off with a little denatured alcohol. So we can turn the dust collector off now. We're gonna do a little little bit of wet sanding. I usually do, you know, I do some dry sanding up to 400. Then I switch over to a couple of grits of the Zona paper, do a little wet sanding. I just find that they're a little bit, these, these, these polishing type papers, when you start getting up into that 600, 800,000 uh, level, I, I just find these to be a little bit better for some reason, I, I don't know. I, I get better results with the polishing papers. And so I'm actually gonna get a couple new ones. Um, I recommend don't keep your sandpapers. Don't try to squeeze every ounce of use <laughs> out of your sandpaper. You're better off just grabbing a new one if it's not really working that well or looks kind of funky. Ah, the Irish in you. Nice. Well, that's exactly what we were going for. That's that's probably the best compliment you could get on this pen. Period. That's awesome. Thanks, Connie. Mark picked the violet. Oh, that's right. Red interference. Who picked the? Oh, was it? It was Jeff. Maybe it was Jeff. Uh. So, Lelia, if you are, were you using negative rate? Cause so, so here's the thing, you guys were talking about, yeah, you want, you want your cutter to be hitting the, the center of the blank. And the best way to do that is bring your tool rest up, take the blank off, don't try to estimate the center of the blank. Get your tool, take the blank off and, and get the tool lined up with the center point. Okay, so I, that's probably, most people are like, yeah, no duh. So, but I just want to make sure that, you know, you know that little kind of tip. Um, the other thing is if you're using standard cutters, you can create negative rake by lifting the tool up. And this is actually how the negative rake cutters from Easy Wood Tools came about. Carl Jacobson would, would put this, he'd hold the tool at this ridiculous angle just so that it was, because you're doing the same thing, you're creating a negative rake. So you still want to hit it at the center, but you know, angle it down. So you'd have to bring your tool rest up a little bit and then angle that cutter into the blank and you're creating a negative angle. Um, and so it's less uh, aggressive, but that's the most uncomfortable position. I, I refuse to do it usually. Um, but if that's all you have and you want to reduce the, you know, you want to reduce the aggressiveness of your standard cutters you can do that you can come in at kind of an angle but again you still need to kind of come in at the middle center line of the blank so if you have standard cutters that you can do that i to be honest though the, the negative rate cutters just if you already have an easy you know an easy wood tool or something that will accept you know that, that those cutters fit on just do yourself a favor spend whatever 15 bucks or whatever it is 
and get a negative rate cutter because they actually do work better than doing the angle thing. <clears throat> They're engineered. They did a lot of testing. I was actually one of their testers. Carl did a lot. I did some. And when they showed these things to me, you know, and it was all hush hush and secret and I was like it was like I don't know. <laughs> I felt like I was like like I was a spy or something. But um when they showed these things to me, I was like, oh that's that is a total game changer. I didn't even have to use it. They just explained it and I was like, wow, yes, I'm on board. I will test these things to death. And they actually told me this. I was demoing at the Portland AAW uh, symposium. And we actually were using some of these negative rate cutters before they had launched them at that demo <laughs> in the booth. And it was mind boggling. So, so good. It worked so well. Uh, and, and I mean, realistically, they literally changed the game for me uh i for for some particular types of projects now, i had no problem turning with standard cutters on pens smaller things like that but when you started getting into larger pieces as well as uh, the biggest one was hollowing i gave up on it i just quit doing it because i would just get um catches and it, it, it was horrible it was not fun i would be so tense holding the tool because just waiting for catches because i got tons of them uh, that I quit I just would not do it and so they came out with these negative rate cutters and it changed the game like it turned hollowing went from like the most uh, I, the thing that I literally hated the most to turn to the thing that I actually kind of like the best um, it is one of my favorite things to do I don't do it a lot because I do a lot of pins and stuff but it is one of my favorite activities now just because of the negative rate cutters that I mean if you want a testimony it was it was a big deal in my shop that's why i'm always promoting those things it was jeff uh, that's what i thought it was i don't think jeff's here today uh thank you guys all for joining the fun on this first saturday uh stream and so you know going forward this is kind of the game plan now i may not you know every week maybe i can't do one every week on, on or two of them you know but i mean they, i'm i'm planning to uh, but you know just to let you know every once in a while i may have something that i got to take care of on the weekend but um going forward that's going to be the game plan we do the casting on wednesday and we do the turning on saturday and uh it should work pretty well i think it's just i i think that it, it'll be a lot more fun for everyone i think because you'll actually get to see <laughs> you know results and it'll be more fun for me because i haven't really been doing a lot of turning Next week's project, I'm pretty sure, unless I, unless I change things up, I don't think I'm going to. Uh, what I want to do is my saw stop fence, you know, like the T-square fence, uh, that I, the rip fence. Uh, it has a handle on it that I, and I actually, I like it. It's kind of, kind of one of those rubbery, you know, it's a nice handle, but it's just a little red stupid handle. And I'm pretty sure that it, I'm guessing it, I haven't looked yet, but I'm guessing it probably takes a 3H16 so we can basically just use, you know, like the standard, I don't know, I'll have to double check how, how to connect it, but um, I'm going to turn a handle, possibly, probably a hybrid one uh, for my, for the saw stop, that'll be kind of fun. We'll do the casting of that on Wednesday, turn it up and screw it on on Saturday. They didn't really introduce them in Portland. It was a big secret. Um, it was after Portland that they actually re like actually released them. They asked me to do testing there. So they were still in the testing phase. Uh, but it, yeah, you might have been able to turn with one. The thing that, that I felt a little bit bad about, so they had Heath Knuckles demoing for them at Portland. And like he doesn't, he never, I don't think he'd ever even picked up a carbide tool before. And so he's demoing. He was scared. You know, it was the first time he's ever demoed. And they stick him in a booth at, you know, one of the biggest turning conventions ever. And uh, and he was getting chip out. And I'm like, why didn't you give him a negative rate cu cutter? <laughs> you know, like I know they didn't want people to see them. But we were in we were in Carl's trailer. And so, like, nobody could have really seen these things anyway. 
<laughs> and I felt so bad. I'm like, you should have given Heath. He would have had no problems, you know, using one of these negative rake things. He was getting chip out and stuff and kind of funny. Okay, so I think we're done here. You get a new piece of... And so we'll roll into... I, I've kind of switched to just using the magic juice stuff. Um, I just... I, I like the convenience of not having to take it off the, the lathe. And they work good, so... Wow. That is looking pretty sweet. What? Get that, oh, man. Look at that thing. That is what... I, I'm not... I'm, you know... I, I'm not one to boast. But that is one of the best-looking blanks I think I've made. Just the, the colors, uh, you know, obviously I like the 3D print stuff, but the colors turned out so good. So if you want to see how to make something like this, go back and watch that, that how I poured these on Wednesday's stream, because these turned out really nice. But, okay, so let's go back. So the whole point is to, to test these shamrocks, uh, the, the 3D prints. And guys, I could not be happier with this it, again once again you cannot you know sometimes if you're turning different types of materials you can feel when you're turning that one of them is a little softer or, or you know whatever um, there's like you can kind of feel it there is absolutely no difference in the feeling um, turning bet between the alumilite this is alumilite clear and that 3d resin that i'm using um, so that's one thing it polished well it sanded and polished quite nicely we have no little bubbles or gaps or anything like that, which is what one of the reasons I like the 3D printing or the, the resin 3D printing style. When you're just trying to lay down a thin line of goo, basically, you know, it melts the, the filament style printers, the way they work, they lay down a, a thin line and it's very difficult to get full infill um, on a lot of printers. And especially for people that are novices. Um, you know, if you really don't have those print settings dialed in and certain filament, you know, plastics just don't work as well. And you get a lot of like bubbles and stuff. I, I've, I've found that I got them, um, you know, um, but this resin stuff lays down a solid layer extremely well. And so that's what I was hoping it polishes pretty well. Sands, I guess, let's say machines. So yeah, I'm hundred percent. We're, we're, uh, stuff is rocking. Totally rocking. All right, so let's see here. Uh, so the the 3D print file for anybody that's got a 3D printer, um, and I I would love to hear feedback from anybody that prints these using filament. Um, so if you want, you know, the, the the 3D print file is available. You can purchase it on my website. Um, if you do print it with uh, a filament style printer, I'd love to hear your results. Um, how it goes for you that would be awesome um, and I'm gonna be selling prints down the road I don't know if I'm gonna sell the shamrock ones right away since st. Patrick's Day is kind of over um, and I'm not I'm I just I haven't figured out how I'm gonna do the selling of the actual prints yet I just it doesn't make a lot of sense to sell a print to people because it's gonna cost you quite a bit to buy one and the shipping is going to be ridiculous because you really need, I would want to box, put them in a box. And the small flat rate boxes are like $8.50. So it's kind of a tough thing. I think you're better off doing packs. So I got to look at the numbers and all that stuff. Um, but they, they will be coming soon. I got the honeycomb, the pinstripes, these clover ones. And we'll be doing some other ones too. As time rolls on here. I think I need to add a little bit more of this. I think I'm gonna do this number one again. I didn't really get, I didn't, I didn't like that so much. Let me, let me do another one. Add a little bit more. So I'm running this at about, I found, I was kind of playing around with the, the speeds with this magic juice and I think you're best off somewhere between 1500 and 2000. I would actually say closer to like 2000 RPMs. Getting really good results. And you just want to apply kind of moderate pressure and go until it's not really, until it's super smooth feeling. Okay, so I just go and then I, I just wipe off the excess with a clean area until I'm not getting 
junk on my paper. That's how I've been getting the best results. <clears throat> Yeah, and I plan to make some blanks down the road as well. I just there's so many things going on right now. It's hard to get keep up on all these things. Okay, so number two. Wow. I mean, just with that one coat of polish, how close are you guys? You guys? You can see it pretty well, but I'm gonna zoom out just a little bit. Put like, you know, like a dime size or so. I don't know. I don't know exactly how much you need. I like to wipe it in so it's not flinging it all over my face. And I start it up. And again, just a little bit of moderate pressure. You'll kind of feel it kind of chunk up and be a little bit, I don't know. You'll feel resistance for a little bit. And then, uh, and then it'll kind of be smooth feeling. So I just kind of give it a little bit more time. That excess off. Then you're good. Ooh. And uh, the 3D print stuff, the shamrocks are polishing up quite nice. Uh, and it's like an even sheen. Um, this was another issue that you would have that ABS plastic really i it was close it would kind of polish up but i mean you got the best results by putting a ca finish on anytime you have two materials next to each other that one of them's a little bit it just doesn't polish the same to the same gloss level um always put a ca finish on it to get an even sheen gloss across the whole thing uh, it'll just it'll look a lot better Give you that kind of nice shiny thing otherwise like if you're just doing it like a hybrid blank or something like that wood is never i don't care if it's stabilized or whatever never going to polish up to a gloss you know like the resin will so it's always just going to look a little bit dull the wood parts next to the the resin you know so i always recommend you know just do a ca finish on top of things like that pine cones is another one that comes to mind um and also, anytime you have stuff um, where you want to kind of seal it, seal it off. <laughs> Ice melt, salt. <laughs> that's a good. That's a good one to to cover up. Pastas for sure. You need to seal it. You know stuff like that. Okay, so we're at step four. Magic juice is a six-step polish. Uh, six-step. Whatever. six steps <laughs> process that's what i was trying to say um and it works pretty good I, I supposedly you can get away with only sanding up to about 600 and then going for this stuff but i, I think that you're going to have a better time if you sand a little higher so i go up to about 1150 1200 somewhere around there somewhere between a thousand and twelve hundred and then your polishing step just goes by really quick um you know you're it you don't have to do it over again or anything like that it, it just handles everything so i think they recommend going up to 2000 something like that i don't think you need to go that high necessarily but i think i would recommend minimum a thousand grit before you start step one of this stuff just think you're going to get the best results that way and it will be like a shorter amount of time you have to sit there and polish it ah thanks philip get that tree out of there too bad it fell down but you might have some projects coming soon from that guy I wish we, we just, my, my, our landlords just had a tree service do a bunch of cutting. I wish we had some trees that were worth turning on our, on their property. <laughs> I'd have been like, hey, give me some of those scraps. Uh, they're, they're all just like pines and stuff. I don't like turning softwoods. 
They were just, they weren't like trunks. They were just like branched, little branches and stuff. Okay, step six. All right, you're all done. Oh, almost lost my glasses. Saved them. Wow. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna put gloves on before I touch this because it is super glossy, and it's looking really good. I gotta be honest, guys. I'm wowed by this. This turned out great. How glossy that is so again you can you know you can really see uh, let's see let me get focusing on ink there you can see that you know the the sheen the gloss i mean it's it's pretty darn close i mean there may be slight discrepancies but i mean if you're just sticking it and you know hold it in, in front of someone there's a nice gloss line across the the shamrocks not like interrupted so i mean i really i don't even think i can actually see a difference in the gloss maybe slightly you know tiny tiny bit uh another thing about that the you know the the sheen level or whatever is that's solid whereas these were made with micas the, the, the casting resins the lumalite and so there would be a little bit more depth to that anyway compared to like a solid color but i mean honestly i mean i can't really see any difference between the two materials wow looking good okay so let's get the camera pulled over to let's see here what am i going to do hold on real quick while i get things kind of set up to there's only one piece to to actually press on this guy i think we're just going to do this over at the casting desk real quick so let me get everything set up there, switch cameras. That one, there we go. All right, so we'll get those guys out of the way. So again, we're, this is a Monarch Grande pen kit. I got it from Turner's Warehouse. There's a link to this in the, the show notes. And uh, don't forget guys, the links to Turner's Warehouse, to Amazon, and uh, Lumalite. Any other ones are our affiliate links. So uh, you'll be supporting the show if you use that link and it doesn't cost you anything. It takes you to the same place, same price as all that stuff. Um, but you have to use that link for me to get the, the credit. Let's say just all it's doing is it's telling Turner's Warehouse that you came from me, basically. That's all an affiliate link is. And then they give me a little bit of a kickback for referring you really awesome program for for makers all right so we got our uh there's probably a little oh no there's not that's ready put our ink in there what's going on here Hmm. I've actually never put together a Monarch Grande. On real quick. you're supposed to put it on later i don't know we got everything working now though so this all you can just put together 
set it aside. The only thing that you're going to actually push on, pre you know, press on, is the the back part. Unscrew. I don't know. As far as I know, anyway. I think. I don't think I want to cover my shamrocks, you know. So I think we're going to put it on like this on the side. We want to have our shamrocks. I'm thinking. Okay, so I'm going to put it to you guys. Do you like the shamrocks? Oh, shoot. Okay, here's a problem, guys. The Monarch Grande's got bigger bushings. I didn't realize. So we're gonna have to we're gonna have to bail on the Monarch Grande. Um, I do have a Monarch, I think, so that's probably a little bit thinner. I don't think it's the same thing with the gold, though. Anything with a little bit of gold in it? Dang, I didn't think about that. Ooh, what do we got up here? That might actually be better. Okay, so hold on, guys. I got a Nuvo Scepter. That sounds fancy. I don't even know. No, that's not going to work. That's a different tube. That would have been a fancy pen kit for this thing. It had some gold in it. Okay, so we're going to put that one away. Let's try this Monarch and see if the see if everything fits correctly on this thing. Very similar. It just doesn't have that gold or brass. Okay, there we go. That one fits. So, the question was, do you guys think that the, let's see here, one goes, I gotta, I gotta not mix all these things up. Someday. I think I saved the baggies on these. But let me just put some stuff away here. The Monarch Grande is not going to work because I, I turned the, the with the wrong bushings for that pen kit. Should have known the Grande meant something. El Grande. Okay. Get these things out. Okay. All right. So the question is, I'm thinking it probably makes the most sense to have the shamrocks when you're holding the pen coming down. The stem is down here. You know, so if you're holding it, you would want the, what do you guys think? That way or this way? That just kind of seems a little silly. I don't know to me have them facing downward that way while you're holding it. What do you think? I know the wrong bushings, I'm telling you. I wish they would just stem down. Oh, really? Really? I mean, I guess if you were going to, like, display it. I, I don't display pens, though. Like, if you were going to stand it up like that, that makes more sense. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, that's making sense. But if, while you're holding it, it just kind of feels a little bit funny to me. I, I tend to kind of agree, I think. Yeah, stem down, but yeah, definitely clover on the side. Stem towards tip. 
you know, down is kind of relevant to something. Stem towards the tip. Stem to tip. Okay. The stem down is obvious. Yes, <laughs> you know, <laughs> down to what? Which part is the down part? That, that's what I was wondering. Okay, so let me look at this thing real quick. And I'm definitely putting the clip on the side. I don't want to cover my... i got to do it this way. I want to cover my clovers. Cam rocks. Thinking... I kind of like this side. The way that the, the swirls are going this one's got a lot of uh, gold in it i just want to kind of break that up a little bit i think i'm just going to put it in like this now i want to try and get this clip centered between the the shamrocks a little bit all right so let me just this thing in here this thing's great for being able to kind of get a camera in and do all that but i still really like the vertical Pressing better. This things line up better for me usually. Mention that. This thing, hands down, is the best disassembly tool I've ever used, though. Not wanting to work too. I gotta switch this. Thing. Times. A little bit. Get it to go. There we go. I think I got it started. Centered. I'm going to switch it around because my right hand is a little bit better at pushing. There we go. And to be careful. I think it's going how it's going at this point. Woo! There we go. We got it. And then this part just presses in. Ooh! That, oh, where's the camera? There it is. That is looking, it's not very bright, is it? Hold on real quick. Let me get, let me get a light going on underneath that camera. You guys can see what the heck's going on. Well, you know what I think I'm going to do is light on my side real quick. Brighten this thing up a little bit. What do you guys think? A light higher. to the ends. Here's the kit. Pretty nice looking kit. So this is just the, the Monarch. And this is antique silver, so it's pretty similar. It just didn't have those those brass accents. But overall, I'm pretty happy with this thing. Uh, very happy with the blank, obviously. I mean, that just turned out fabulous. Pretty sweet. So, I'm happy. 
I'm happy with that. All right, so let's see here. What time is it? 1.20. I'm gonna switch to the intro view here real quick. Uh, while I, I'm gonna put my bushings away so I don't lose them. <laughs> don't like doing that. And I wanna do a giveaway. So I am gonna try to, uh, I'm gonna try to set up the giveaway thing really quickly and do it right now. So the giveaway is gonna be for um, the orange and black, one of these. Um, these guys are gonna be going to the two mystery box people. Gene is one of them. Let's see here. Jim, I don't think Jim's here. Don't let anybody, well, yeah. I might, I might, if I post this, I might actually just try to sell this one. Get some money for it, I don't know. I got another one too. So that's the nice thing is I got another blank. Um, that's, that's kind of another reason why I like doing Sierras. You know, you get one blank and you get two pens. So I'll have to turn that up sometime and, and maybe keep that one for myself. So let me, hold on real quick, guys. It's gonna take a couple seconds here to set up this giveaway thing. Oh, let's, let's, let's see if we can get this to work. Um, I forgot to set this up ahead of time and I apologize. But let me, let me scroll back here and see. Does anybody have any questions? That's the big one. So we have, um, if anybody does 3D printing right now and you want the, the file, uh, you know, to make the box part with the clovers, the shamrocks, uh, those are available on my website. I also have the honeycomb file and I also have the, the pinstripe. And so these are just the files. These are, these are not things that you can count, like physical products. They're not physical anything. They're the files if you have a 3D printer. I always wanna make sure everybody understands what we're, what we're talking about here. Um, there's a link in the show notes down below already and here's a link right there so let me switch over to I'm running a little bit late this morning I actually it took some time to to watch the saturday morning cart morning sound like i'm irish uh saturday morning cartoons out longer than I expected. I was just gonna pop in and I, I couldn't leave. I was like, oh man, doing some cool stuff. Okay, so I'm in the thing. Let me see if I can work. It's been a while since I did this. Cloudbot. Giveaways. Okay, so this should hopefully work. Huh. Wow. You know what's crazy, guys? <laughs> the last giveaway that we did is a shamrock pen blank. That's weird. It was, but it was the little glitter shamrocks. I don't need to edit the title, obviously. Let me just go in and edit the thing. So here we go. So this will be for subscribers, I think. Yep. Subscribers and moderators. Okay. No time. So I've, I've saved it. So I'm hoping that this thing will start right away. Let's see. I started it. The giveaway has started, it says. And it hasn't done it yet, but I'm hoping that it'll work. So hopefully it should in the chat say it started. Oh shoot, I forgot to look up.
don't know what you're supposed to write. <laughs> what happens when you just wing it? Oh, there it is. A shamrock pen blank from last week. Hey, look at all that. It, it works. So, uh, so enter, type into the chat if you're a subscriber and you want to get entered. Exclamation raffle, just like Yak did. Okay, and so again, it's for the, it's orange and black. Uh, Steve came up with this really cool. This one's going to look awesome, I think. It's going to be really good contrasting colors to the green, I think. Um, so, but anyway, so thanks to, to Steve for, for hooking it up with that. But uh, orange and black swirls with some shamrocks. Kind of cool. It's like a, a Harley Davidson Irish theme. Sweet. So um, I also want to mention, I just, I haven't posted it yet on Patreon. Uh, for patrons, um, next week on Wednesday at 2 p.m., uh, we are going to do a little bit of a, a live stream um, kind of discussion chat thing. Um, we're not, I'm not doing any projects or anything. I just wanted to, to kind of get together with as many of you that can come out and kind of discuss uh, some changes that I've made already. I already kind of mentioned it last week on the on the stream here, but um, go into a little bit more depth about some of the changes on Patreon and also just ask for some ideas and we'll just kind of chat about you know Patreon in general. Um, so that'll be like about a 30 minute thing. So 2 p.m. Pacific time and, <clears throat> and then I'll end it about 30 minutes in and then uh, the normal live stream will be at three o'clock. So that'll give me like half an hour to kind of make sure I'm <laughs> prepared and ready for the real live stream. Um, so uh, anybody that can make it, I'd love to hear from you guys and we can kind of chat about everything and I'll, I'll go through how to, we can kind of cover how to, you know, one of the things is I've added different tier levels and I can kind of show you how to change your tier if you want to switch. Um, so little things like that, just explain what's going on, some ideas that I have that, that you guys don't even know about yet, and then also see what ideas and thoughts you have on the changes that have been made and the ideas as well. So, uh, or if you have any other ideas that you'd love to share. So it'll be kind of fun. I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Um, and then uh, let's see here. For anybody that can't make it that's a patron, uh, you, that video or that chat thing will be uh, replayable or you can watch it later on uh, if you want to. Uh, or you can just, if you have ideas or thoughts or whatever, I'll try to explain some of the stuff in, in the description for that uh, live stream. I'll be posting that today. Uh, if you have any thoughts about anything, um, either you know leave a comment on that post on Patreon or uh, just shoot me a message either through Patreon or through email. Um, probably through Patreon would be the best way. Um, I always encourage you guys, uh, if you have questions that in your patrons, to try to use the patron chat system because I get a kind of a separate notification and I get all of them. Sometimes I miss emails. Sometimes I don't, I don't see the DMs and stuff on Facebook and Instagram like ever. So just that's the best way to go. All right. Uh, no, Dave, I don't have any of these guys for sale right now. Um, I'm still, I'm still trying to just get my head wrapped around, you know, do, doing testing uh, for different things on the 3D printers and, and kind of figuring out how to get things rolling with some of the products. The, the prints themselves, the digital files, if you want to print these on your own 3D printer, are available. Um, they just, they, they are easy, simple. There's no shipping. There's no, it's just, here's the file. Here's the price. You can download it. Um, no tickets. There are no tickets. How did I fix this before? Why is this thing such a... I'm really not super thrilled with... I, why doesn't YouTube just have one of these things built in? Come on. Okay, so let me think about this real quick. How you need to reset the system. Oh. Okay, hold on, guys. I think I know what I did. Okay, I, I think I know what I did. I closed it. We're not going to pick a winner out of that because there was only one person. I, I think I know what I did. I, I messed up. All right, so we are going to slightly edit this. Mouse is not. 
Okay, so let's start this again. Sorry, guys, you're, we're gonna have to do this again. This time it should work. Hopefully, if this doesn't work, I got one other idea. <laughs> But it's the one of those things. There's no better ways to do. This. Okay, so we've restarted it. <laughs> we've so now do it again. Enter. Sorry about that. Uh, exclamation raffle. And then now it should give you a ticket. Not seeing any tickets being. But I think it, I don't think I need to reset the system. It's working. <sighs> okay, so I'm not seeing any tickets, guys, generated. So, not working. Okay, one more. I have one more try. So, I'm going to cancel it one more time. Confirm. If this doesn't work, we'll have to do it next week. I didn't like it. Okay, I think everything's good. So to save that, and then we're going to start it one more time. Okay, one more time. Let's see if this works. <laughs> okay, so redo it again and hopefully it'll work this time because okay we're gonna just get a spinny wheel and have everybody type in a, a number if <laughs> this doesn't work oh okay tickets are going on now and it work okay it's working this time There we go. You receive a ticket. You receive a ticket. You receive. So we'll just do this for, I don't know, a couple minutes, and then I'll close down the thing, and we will choose a winner. How exciting. I love giveaways. All right, so uh, what was I talking about? So again, uh, just, just that reminder for, for patrons, Tuesday, if you can make it at 2 p.m. Pacific time, um, and I will post a, a post thing, just, just like the, the monthly hangouts kind of thing where there's a post and then you'll have access to a live stream um, on Tuesday at 2 p.m. We'll just kind of chat about things a little bit, um, see if you guys have any ideas and I'll explain everything that's going on uh, so far that I've, that I've kind of come up with. And then, uh, and then it'll be kind of cool. So for anybody that, that can't make it out, you know, just leave a comment there or, or shoot me a message uh, through the patron Patreon a uh, little message system um and if you have any ideas for for patreon just just getting you know making sure that it's the best community that you guys can have basically should be pretty fun and uh, oh one other thing guys for patrons i am going to be changing the the you know so right now it's patreon.com slash envy woodworks but obviously i've dissolved that business entity so and there's no website or any of that stuff so I'm going to be changing that to patreon.com slash resinworksstudio. I don't think that's really going to affect anybody necessarily, but I do want you to know that. The other thing is I don't know if they will kind of save the old one and like reroute you. I'm kind of thinking no, uh, but I just want to let you guys know that is going to happen like 
soon, very soon, um, probably within the next couple days. Um, so I am going to put a post up with that information as well on Patreon, just to remind you, probably send out a message to everybody as well. So all kinds of things going on. I just want to make sure you guys are, are uh, up to up to speed on all that. <laughs> you like your, yeah, yeah, Mike was the only one that had a, a an entry last time. I, I'd like to give it to subscribers. It just kind of makes sense, you know, like only let subscribers enter, but I guess it doesn't work, so didn't like it. Um, there are other ways that I can, you can kind of um, like give subscribers more tickets is a thing that I've seen. I don't know. You, like basically kind of like weight it towards subscribers. But, it, you know, if you have a feature in your program that says, hey, you know, do a raffle for subscribers only, uh, how about you just work? Okay, so it looks like, let's see, it's been a couple minutes. I'm just going to wait, like, one more minute. Uh, Dave's in. You only get one ticket, so, you know, I'll let you know. It's all kind of an even, even Steven thing. So last call, make sure if you want to get in on the raffle for the orange and black shamrock pen blank, uh, type exclamation raffle in the chat window and you will be entered. And it's good for anyone anywhere in the world. Um, I will say though, man, shipping prices to get over to like the UK and like Europe and even Canada is not cheap. They really need to come up with some, uh, I don't know, cheap drone system that <laughs> just we can like rocket launch it over the over the pond and it's it's like free vincent welcome to the stream if you want to get in on the the, the chance to win uh type in exclamation raffle kind of you kind of caught the end of the show so if you want to watch uh the the turning um i don't know if you you were watching the whole time but here is the result Ugh, my mouse isn't working nothing works here we go. Here's the result of our turning. I gotta find where the thing is. Let me, there we go. It's a little dark. Let me go get my light. Let me go get the light real quick. Get a little bit better. There we go. Ooh. I was very, very pleased with how this thing turned. It turned great. So I guess I'll put it out there. If anybody wants to, you know, that's watching, I always kind of assume everybody that's watching the live streams are, you know, pastors and turners. So I don't really ever say, hey, if you want to buy this thing, <laughs> I just don't think about it. Uh, if anybody is interested in that, let me know. Because um, I'll probably be selling that one. I might make another one for myself with the other blank. All right, so Australia. Oh, I bet that. Yeah, I haven't shipped anything down down under for a long time now. Yeah, it's just the shipping is so expensive these days. Even in even in the states. I mean, I got to be honest. I was talking about I'm having a a tough time with how to deal with just you know not the blank itself, but just the prints. Um, they you know they're fragile. Um, the honeycomb ones. If like if if I stuck that in just one of those bubble mailers and then they they like smushed it i mean it would be broken by the time you got it and so you know i i'm thinking you got to put it in a box of some sort and so um and i don't have i don't want to go buy mini boxes or you know stuff like that i want to pay more it's, it's gonna cost you so i was thinking you know the the small flat rate box but that's 850 you know to send a little uh thing so i think what i'm gonna do is sell packs of them to make it more good I guess, whatever Vinny's in nice all right so I want to make sure so did Vincent get in on the it's funny because we just had to Vinny but Vincent uh, make sure if you want to get in on the the raffle um, type in exclamation raffle $75 oh my god yeah uh i don't know if i'm going to be shipping <laughs> nobody from australia can win this <laughs> that's too much 
I, we'll see. Maybe I can find some weird carrier that'll... All right, it looks like everybody's in. I'm going to wait one second to make sure Vincent Vincent wants to get in. Damn, why does my mouse not work? Five dollars to ship. I don't think Europe or UK is that high, but I mean, it's like 30 bucks probably. Ship a pen blank. Yeah, I apologize. Yeah. How about I send you a sticker instead? Can you send, well, because you can like send just like a first class envelope, I'm guessing. That's still, I mean, you still got to do like international. All right, so. Okay, so I think we're going to close it down. I'm not seeing anybody else coming in here. So we're closing the entries. Closed. We're going to pick a winner. <clears throat> Hopefully I only did it for one winner. Winner. Lelia! Lelia won the pen blank. Congratulations. There it is. Giveaway closed. I'm, I'm just looking at the chat. That this, There might be a delay. It's it's in the chat before I said it, I think. <laughs> Congratulations, Lelia. Uh, I, th I don't know. I think I have your address. I, just just to make sure, shoot me an email or, or a patron message with your, your address, and I will get this into the mail, and it'll be out shipped to you uh, probably on Monday. All right? So anyway, pretty cool. Pretty cool. Uh, let me just scroll up. Nobody wanted this pen, right? Paying attention up. You just pointed the chat and whoever's name. <laughs> That's the way to do it, Dave. I know. Jeez, I need to start doing that too. The thing is, like, sometimes these these things can make it. There's certain things that are better uh, about them. Like, I don't know. And I I used to use certain things where like it it had the address. Like it was just so simple. It was all like streamlined and everything was great. So, I don't know. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Who knows? But anyway, guys, uh, I, I really appreciate you guys coming out on this first uh, Saturday. Uh, again, we're doing, you know, the, the casting stuff is going to be on Wednesdays, and then we're going to turn or, you know, work on the project, work on, work on one of or, or the project that we made on the Wednesday stream on Saturdays. And so, and I also wanted to kind of stagger the times because I know that the the three o'clock, my normal Wednesday ones, I know for you guys over in, in UK, Europe, um, I think Australia is just like the opposite time and it's just not convenient for anyone down under. But um, I know that the UK and, and Europe, you know, it's getting pretty late for you guys at the end of that. So I thought, you know, on the weekend, um, let's bring it earlier. Um, it's still gonna be kind of late for you guys over, like I said, Europe. But uh, and then for, for everybody in the States, it's a little bit earlier because if you if you had plans or something for Saturday night, again, if you're on the East Coast, it's starting to kind of creep up into that nighttime. Um, so, you know, I thought, I don't know, hopefully it's a little bit more convenient and, and different people can can make it out at noon uh, Pacific time rather than three. So anyway, let's see what time is it in the US? It's uh, right now for me, it's 1:45 uh, p.m. So, and I'm on the Pacific, you know, the, the fur, furthest west time zone. Um, the Like New York would be three hours later. Uh, so 4.45 for, the, for New York time. Yeah, I guess it's about 1.40. Um, I have this clock on the wall that somehow has, like I never, it changes automatically somehow. It knows daylight savings. I guess it's because of the date, but oh, that's gonna be interesting. If they change the daylight saving thing, that thing's going to be off half the time. That's that's funny. Anyway, so, yeah, your lucky day. That's true. Lucky day. So I can't wait to see what you make with this blank, too. That'll be kind of fun to see. So let's see here. I'm just pulling down. I don't think there's any other like questions or anything. So next week, again, the game plan is uh, I'm going to be doing the... Let me... Is my camera working? It is. I'm surprised the battery didn't die. I will show you guys what I what I'm talking about here, um, and I haven't really looked at this. I I just know that it's, I'm sure it's easy to replace, um, but let's get a good kind of good view. 
what's going on here. So my saw stop T fence, you know, the, the rip fence has a little handle thing on it that just kind of lends itself to being replaced with something cool, <laughs> you know? Um, so this thing, and I mean, I, we, I can just pull it off. It just screws in. I, I think it's a 3816. I, I'm going to double check that, but uh, so, I mean, there's nothing wrong with this handle. It's kind of, you know, grippy and rubbery and all that stuff, but um, there's really nothing to it. I mean, this is like the most basic, simple thing. Why not replace that with something cool that I made? So I think that's what we're going to do next week is replace that. Let me, uh, I'll, I'll double check it later. I'll figure out whatever thread size that is and we'll just do it. Um, <clears throat> so on Wednesday, we're going to cast a handle blank. Uh, probably a couple of them. I'm not just going to make one necessarily. Uh, uh, so we'll, we'll cast the blank for that. And then on Saturday, we'll turn it up. And the cool thing about that is that's like immediately the, the minute it's done turning, I just put it on and it's ready to go. So it's going to be kind of fun. So let's see here. Double check and make sure I'm not missing. Off the automatic time. Well, yeah, I don't know if I can turn off the automatic because I have this clock thing on the wall. What I'm saying is I have this clock that I don't know how it operates and it always turns for, I don't know. I, I'll have to look into it. it. I put it up there like seven years ago, maybe, or something like that. And I've just never even looked at it again. It just plugs into the wall. It does, tells me the time, but it's always off five or seven minutes. It's did Lilia win the, the Jake's blanks too? Nice. That's cool. Okay. Well, I'm going to get rolling, guys. And uh, one thing, another thing that I, I guess I'll give you a little bit of a, a fill the beans on. So another thing that I want to hopefully do uh, with the, the stream. So, you know, in my head, I, I, like I said, I did a planning retreat a couple of weeks ago and kind of sat down and thought about different things that I could do add make better this year for you know youtube for the business basically all the stuff um what i'm gonna try to do is you know we cast something on wednesday's stream and then saturday we're gonna turn it up right and so what i want to do i know a ton of people cannot they i mean i have gotten just belligerent emails and people are so pissed <laughs> it's funny uh, in the comments uh that you know a lot of what i what i've been doing for content is streams these you know two, one or two hours or sometimes three hour streams and they can't stand watching the long things and i i totally get it i understand but um i just haven't been able to put videos together the short form ones and so and i don't really want to cut down the streams i didn't want to edit them down to nothing um because i know a lot of people actually like watching the the two hours you know full uh later so what we're going to do though is we're going to keep these live streams the way they are on wednesday and, and saturday and you can see the replays but what i plan to do is take the files and hopefully like cut it down into a shorter version for people that don't like watching hours of video so um, that is my game plan we'll kind of see how that you know works out but it should happen um, and, and I've tried to schedule things where we get done with Saturday and I go and edit that stuff out. So I'm hoping that we can kind of get that going. It's just another thing that I can hopefully provide some extra content, um, you know, so people have options to, to watch, you know, lengths that they would rather see. So we'll, like I said, we'll have to kind of see how that goes. I'm going to start trying that out today and see how it goes and it'll be pretty fun. Uh, but there's going to be a video on Sunday also coming out. So the next resin 3d printing video kind of five tips things that you need to know before you get into resin 3d printing um, so that'll be coming up uh posted on sunday and then i'll probably post the, the that little live stream con condensed live stream thing from this week um, doing this shamrock stuff probably next week sometime i'll have to figure out when i'm going to post those um, i don't know i don't think it really matters but so anyway i i that's just giving you guys the updates what's happening here so let's see here christina thank you Thank you for, yeah, the new handle should be kind of cool. I, I, mean, I swear, I mean, I've had that, that saw stop for 15 years and, you know, and it, it, whatever. And I could have put a wood handle on it when I, you know, way back in the day when I was just doing wood and stuff. But, um, but I mean, like I would say the last five years, I've looked at that like almost every time I use it and I'm like, I got to make a handle. for that. We're going to do it. We're going to get on that and make it better. 
So anyway, guys, uh, like I said, hopefully the, the, the updates and everything you, you, you're excited about. And I hope that you guys have a wonderful rest of the weekend, rest of the day. Get in the shop, make something cool, uh, do some resin casting. And again, one last final uh, reminder for patrons, two, two big things. I'm going to be changing the, you know, when you go to my Patreon page, it's going to be uh, patreon.com slash resinworkstudio from now on. Not sure if that matters to anybody, if that's, I don't think that's how you access my stuff, but I think you just go to Patreon usually, but I just want to let everyone know that that is going to change. And I'm not sure that they're going to reroute people that were using the old link. So that's not awesome, but we'll still have to see how that goes, but that's what it's going to be going forward. And we're going to be doing a kind of a little uh, chat hangout on Tuesday, 2 PM Pacific time. To just discuss some stuff all right so um, i'll be posting more information and how you access that stream on patreon and so anyway i will see most of you guys hopefully on on wednesday at at, uh, at 3 p.m we'll do the the casting for the handle and then for the patrons i'll see you guys hopefully at 2 p.m next week on wednesday and i will see everybody in the comments sunday on that video so anyway guys have a wonderful evening and i will see you guys on the next stream